Okay, so we'll look at the next part of, of seasons. <clears throat> so when we look at the, the tilt of Earth's axis, it means that the amount of fields directed and absorbed by the planet from the sun in the central of the universe changes all the time. And that's what gives us our, our seasons. And, and the, the tilt gives the plants uh, different magrav fields at different times of the year and at different parts of the planet as well. So this also explains why certain plant species will only grow New Zealand and, and for example, in Australia and uh, not grow in the tropics um, and so you end up having the from north to south you also then have the different zones where some plants grow and some plants don't is because they all then exposed to different fields at different points on the planet and this tilt basically gives us the variation in plant life across the whole planet um, so from if you look at north to south and east to west we have that variety of, uh, of plant life, and it's just due to the, the differences in the field strengths coming in. As well as the weather, obviously. Um, yes. Weather zones. Okay, I want to look at specifically um, autumn. And to do that, I'm just going to do a, a very brief structure of the leaf. Um, the internal workings of the leaf um, and when we're looking at uh, like the photosynthesis that we're still trying to uh, work on and decipher um, but for today it's we just look at the basic structure um, and we know that it has the two surfaces the front and back of the leaf now your top side of the leaf is always the shiny part that's the one that's always uh, exposing itself to the sunlight and this is the amino acid on the surface of the leaf. So just like our CO2 box where the amino acid sits on the, on the surface of our water, so the amino acid will collect on top of the leaf. Now both the top and bottom of a leaf is nano-coated um, and as well essentially the whole plant is as a nano-coated um, layer, so even your stems and so that every part of it is interacting with the fields. So even when you look at um, some of the stem part, uh, with some plants, you will see the tiny little hairs on, on the stems and all those hairs are, are uh, contact points with the interaction of the fields. So just like our whole skin is nano-coated and interacting with the fields around us, so the plant as well, from the leaf to the stems to the trunk or every part of the plant is interacting with the fields. And the structure inside of a leaf is in a GAN state. Um, so that's very important to understand. Internally within the plants, it's all in a GAN state, same as internally within the human body, everything is in a GAN state. So I'm gonna look at how plants react to the environment and what makes the leaves on a plant turn brown and fall off. So the plants are reacting to these change in magra fields in the environment and they will decide according to their RNA and DNA to absorb or reject their field, these fields. And these are the fields of your carbons, oxygens, hydrogens and nitrogen producing the amino acids on the surface of their leaves. And this is the food source of the plants, is this amino acid. You know, we're all eating amino acids in different forms. When we are eating meat from another animal, the, or the meat is an amino acid in an amino acid form. If we are eating plants, it's in an amino acid form. So just like we eat food, which is all amino acid based, so the plants are also eating food which is amino acid based. By absorbing the fields, yeah. not eating anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when the leaves on a plant cannot connect with the fields from the environment, so we'll get a change in the season, which is a change in the strength of the fields. 
um, they cannot, can no longer create the amino acids or the food source on the surface of their leaf uh, because of the different field strengths. They have to find a match. So when this happens, the plant will close this gap between the two surfaces of the leaf. And the closing of this gap means it can no longer absorb any fields. So the plant decides, I cannot absorb these fields. It's a different strength. And so it will close that gap between the two surfaces of the leaf. This process takes time in terms of the closing of the gap. So we see the changing of the color of the leaf from the green to the yellow to the orange colors of autumn. The leaves are essentially dying and losing their fields to the environment. Um, the decay of the leaves is a release of fields to the environment. So when we see something uh, decaying and dying, it's always releasing fields to the environment because nothing is ever lost. It's always just changed from one form to another. And the color that we see of the leaf is sort of an internal structure. Um, which gives us that color. And so as those, that gap between the two, the outer and the two surfaces of the leaf closes slowly, so that color changes as the leaf slowly starts um, dying because it just essentially cannot absorb the fields anymore. So the leaves drop from the plants and the plants essentially go to sleep to conserve energy until the conditions are right again for the new growth in spring. Because the, as there's no leaves for the plants to, uh, to gain new energies, so they just have to conserve and their energy throughout the winter period. And um, so they go to sleep and enjoy their winter growth, just like the hibernation of some bears. So some of the plants do that as well. And when we have the leaves on the ground, we now essentially have dried gants on the ground because now that gap between the two surfaces of the plant has closed um, to such a degree that sometimes when you pick up those leaves, you can see that they just crumble in your hands and that's essentially now dried gans. So it's the same when, I don't know if any of you have uh, dried some of your CO2 gans, it's just in a nice, just forms a nice powdery substance and that's what your leaves are as well. When you crumple them up, it's just a nice powdery substance and that's essentially dried gans. And as we said, when things decompose, so your leaves decomposing, um, it's just a release of fields to the environment. So during this whole stage, during the autumn period, um, the plants are releasing fields which are available for others to use. So nothing is ever destroyed. It is simply converted from one form to another. So this release of energy is available for others to use. Um, we as, as human beings will absorb that energy as well. Um, that's why autumn gives uh, different feelings to, to people. Um, it's always tremendous beauty in autumn time with the different colors. And so um, we understand that we absorb these fields. Um, so as even as the plants are uh, sort of the leaves are slowly dying, um, they are feeding us with this uh, tremendous energy and, and other creatures out there as well. So it's just a, a transfer of, of from one form to another of this energy. So now we can see that, that plants will change their leaves according to the fields of the environment. So when we look at springtime, um, it's always full of new birth, new growth. Um, it's a very, when you look at the green color, it's a very vibrant green because everything's coming to life. Summertime, things are much more established, growth. Um, and that green color will also be different compared to the green color on plants. You know, if you notice the new birth of, of uh, growing tips on plants, that green color is very different to the older green colors and leaves on the plants. Autumn, we get the changes to uh, beautiful colors of the yellow and orange, and in winter you get your brown and dropping off. So the leaves indicate to us the changes in these environments. 
So when one looks at, at, at the leaf structure itself, um, these external fields, whether it be in autumn or summer, they dictate the gap of the leaf and the plant decides that they want to shut down um, during the autumn and winter period and um, just go to sleep. And so you'll see all these leaves dropping off. So when the plant can no longer find a match to the external fields, it will just close this gap and the leaves will dry and fall off. And it's as simple as that, as the trees reacting to the environment around them. As we know, not all plants lose their leaves in winter. Um, so if we were to observe these plants, we would still see a change in the color of their leaves during the different seasons as well. So even a, a, your green color of a, of a plant in autumn or winter or spring or summer will be slightly different. So they are changing to the environment, but it's a very subtle change. And they're also uh, producing new leaves and other leaves are dropping off, but it's done on a very slow basis throughout the year. And just to bring in some other aspects of, of, of our understanding now, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the uh, flower essences, those Bach, Bach flower remedies. There's also what they call a falling leaf essence, which is uh, developed by an Australian chap. We have read his book. And so what he does is he just makes essences of the different trees, different leaves as it falls from the tree. And he just soaks this leaf in water and um, the magrave fields are imprinted into the water. So as we know that the leaf is dried gans, and so all these leaves are imprinting those fields into the water, just like a flower essence would do the same thing. And so now we can understand how, by understanding this technology, how it all fits in with different aspects of, of what we've all been exposed to over these years. <clears throat> 